Welcome to Time Travelling Team, the weekly podcast where we review every story of Doctor Who right from the very beginning. I'm Trisha. And I'm Paddy. In today's Rambling in the TARDIS, we take a look back at Surgeon Lieutenant Harry Sullivan and his time in the TARDIS. We will be talking about his strengths and his weaknesses, and also listing his stories from worst to best. We'd also love to hear your thoughts on Harry, so to join the discussion, you can, as always, check us out at Time Team. That's T-I-M-E-T-E-A-M-P on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Or you can email us at timetravellingteamp at teampproductions.com. So, Surgeon Lieutenant Sullivan. Mm-hmm. So, I think we were starting with weaknesses. Yes. So, I'm going to hand it to you first, Paddington. Mm-hmm. Weaknesses for Harry. Uh, so, straight out the gate, like we might as well just like address the, the elephant in <laughs> Harry's room, is... <laughs> His, I think his biggest weaknesses are his old-fashioned mentality. Mm. He intended to be, I suppose, chivalrous. Yes. But, unfortunately, he comes across as very patronising and or misogynistic. Yes. And it's a shame, because he doesn't mean any harm. He he, he really doesn't. And in in a way similar to the first Doctor, which we love to harp on about... Mm. Anyone looking at the highlight reel or as someone else's skewed perspective could sour people from watching Harry and actually missing out on the stuff that he's great at. Yeah. You know? And for me personally, I think those are his like his biggest thing, like the, his biggest weaknesses. Like obviously, you know, just the whole, oh, Harry's a bumbling, Im- or he's a ham-fisted idiot or he's an imbecile. And it's like, to be fair, he's a, like you take him out of his element and he kind of stumbles into stuff much mm. the same way that any human being would, you know? Yeah. So I I just really think that it's his own fashion mentalities, which unfortunately paints him in a very negative light at times. Yeah. So like, I mean, Harry is a bit clueless, mm. but similar to say the likes of Ian and Barbara who overcame their weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Harry overcomes that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll come back to one instance where he didn't in the, the club when I'm doing the rankings, but like, like I said, he's a fish out of water, do you know? And yeah, he bumbles in. He doesn't remember what buttons he pressed, he, you know, whatever. But he grows beyond that to the point of like earlier this week when we were talking about Zygons, he, there's no, there's no remnants of that left over. By the time we get to Zygons. Mm-hmm. I think the old-fashioned sexist part is the one that never really goes away. No. Because it's not rooted in sexism. It's rooted in old-fashioned chivalry and ideology. Mm-hmm. So he clearly respects Sarah Jane a great deal, even from the off. But his comments come across like he's sexist and mm-hmm. that he's look that he's talking down to her, but he's not. No. Do you know? Like he, you know, encourages her, you know, he's always chuffed when she does something and things like that. Like he's ever like, Oh, Sarah can't do that. You know. He doesn't want her to get hurt, certainly, mm-hmm. but like he would never hold her back or anything like that. He's not the type of guy that would come and say, Be careful, she'll bring the whole lot down around you if you're not careful. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't say that. He's not Mike. And that's the difference, Mm. is that I think the only thing that Harry doesn't get over, Mm. and it's one that if I was Harry's friend, I would bait him over the head until he did get over it, is Sarah asks him several times to stop calling her old girl. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like it. No. And yet he still continues to do it right until the end. Mm -hmm. That's probably the only thing where Harry doesn't get over himself. Yeah. Where something has been called out as a flaw. And he doesn't even try. There's one or I think there's one time where like he he goes to call her old thing and he, he sort of stops and corrects himself. But like it's still his default. Mm -hmm. But then again, we've only had six stories. Yeah. You know, He still has room to grow. That's fine. Um, But in terms of the sexism, that's probably the only thing where it's like, you know, 
It's like, okay. I call everyone hon mm-hmm. and love. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long I've known you. <laughs> and I call it to people in work as well, which people just find mm-hmm. bonkers. But particularly with terms of endearment like that, an old girl would be another one or old thing or whatever he wants to use. And you see it a lot where, you know, even in today's world, you have someone who maybe for it's like, you know, oh, thank you, dear. Dear meaning a term of endearment, Mm -hmm. but it can come across as condescending. And if someone asks you to not call them that anymore, you shouldn't. Yeah. Like if you have a work colleague who always calls you sweetheart and you tell them that you don't think it's appropriate for them to call you sweetheart, you don't like it, they should stop. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's, that's probably the only thing with Harry where, again, it's not coming from a bad place, but he's maybe not realising that she really doesn't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it helps identify if he's a Zygon or not. So it has its uses. But that's probably the only thing that I would say carries over for Harry. But again, six stories, room for improvement. Maybe mm-hmm. he would have gotten there eventually. Possibly. Do I just remind, uh, remind, remember there now is that, um, go, go way back. Like, so obviously we're doing ranking him six to one. Mm. Someone that we could have ranked six to one, but we didn't was Dodo. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause she only has technically six stories as well. Mm. Can't remember what we did for Dodo. No, I uh, no, I just think we just did like the basic, um, one, two, three, three, two, one. Okay. But yeah, so I mean, those are Harry's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. They're not anything major. And like I said, one of them he massively grows beyond. Mm -hmm. The other one he does less. Mm -hmm. But there's still that one little... Yeah, it's it's still kind of... It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's ingrained in the character. Yeah. But then we have his strengths. Mm -hmm. So... So, for me, one of Harry's biggest strengths, I think, is his deceptive, the deceptive nature of his appearance. Mm. Because he does come across, and like it's, it's definitely from the end of Robot, mm. all the way up until Zygons, is he looks like that stereotypical like old boy, you know, club member. You know, he mm. has the club jacket, you know, off to the cricket pavilion, like for a pint type thing. You know. It's it's very easy to forget that he's actually a naval medical officer, yeah. and a very capable one at that, mm. uh, because like he's incredibly calm under pressure, as we've mm. seen, you know, with the landmine sequence in uh, Genesis. He's incredibly brave, like we've seen in Santaran. Mm-hmm. He's very resourceful, yeah. which we see in like the I'm just everything, like, in, much. in everything really the arc I think especially. Uh, mm. and he's also very caring. The, yeah. the, the, that you know, like the Hippocratic oath is there, and he's but he's also he's very caring towards the Doctor and Sarah. Like mm. I, th- I think for all its flaws, Revenge of the Cybermen helps show that. Yeah, very much so. I think, I think you're right. I think his placement in the military is not just honorary. No, he is a soldier, well, a naval officer, mm. as well as a doctor. Mm. I think the best way to describe Harry, and this kind of goes where like strengths is a, or weaknesses is a strength kind of thing that we've had with him before. Harry is a Boy Scout in the best possible way. Mm. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Do I get them all? The, pff, I was never in Scouts. So. <laughs> I think I got them all. Um, but he is a Boy Scout. Yeah. In the best possible way. Mm-hmm. In his sense, like, Harry Sullivan at his core is a good person. Yes, absolutely. He is a strong individual. He is very loyal to his friends. And he cares very deeply and very honestly. I think, you know, the other side of it, though, is that he is willing to do what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Genesis with placing the bombs and doing the wiring. Santar and grabbing a stick and fucking running off and whatever. Zygons, like we said, like that sort of bandolier thing that was likely going to be full of explosives or whatever. Mm. He's not one to turn away from it. 
But what I think is Harry's greatest strength in comparison to maybe some other characters we've seen, if we think about Jamie, or if we think about some other characters, he doesn't glorify it either. Hmm. When he has to be serious and militaristic, his whole demeanor changes. It's business. It's something that needs to be done. It's not a joke. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. It's serious. It it, it kind of reminds me of like you know Ben in the Ten Planet, mm. like you know you know he gave me no choice in the sense. Of, yeah. So like, it's it's. I think you sometimes might forget in terms of like because you have the Brig and the Benton who've been mm. very action oriented. The Benton <laughs> and the the Benton because he is the Benton. Um, they've been very action orientated, mm. and we've they've killed a lot of people. A lot of mm -hmm. like a lot of creatures and that kind of stuff, and now we've never actually seen their reaction because I think, like honestly, unlike Yates, who we've seen a bit inappropriate at times, mm. um, we've never seen like what their thought process is or their or their handling process is mm. of it. Whereas Ben and Harry now I think are the best examples of people that go into the military. They're, so they go in there for the defense of their country. They don't go there to actively hurt people. They want to yeah. protect people. Mm. And they're good representatives of that in the sense of they pushed us to, you know, like in Ben's case, they pushed me to the limit. I ha I had to do it. In Harry's cases, with Genesis, it's, I don't like it, but it's the option that we have, you know? Yeah, yeah I think, I mean, that's what makes Harry such an interesting character that's so much more complex than the Hanthus Juliet. Oh, hugely. Hugely. So much more complex than the imbecile. So much more complex you know, the old-fashioned condescending misogynist yeah. or whatever. And like, I think that's why like, the ham-fisted idiot and the imbecile on rewatch, they actually bother me. Because again, it's a case of he's, he doesn't know. He's not to know. Like He's a, he's a human that has no experience of this. Hmm. Like, up up until fucking, like, what, like, a, a day ago, mm. he assumed that the doctor was just a regular person. And then, like, you know, like, there's two heartbeats and all this type of shit. Like, he, his world is being opened a bit. He doesn't have the experience. Uh, well, we'll talk about this more, I'm sure, when we, do, when we start ranking the stories. Mm. But the ham-fisted idiot call it, I don't mind as much. Mm. Because that's what he was. Do you know? But... When we talked about this in talk about revenge, the imbecile comment bothers me. Yes. Because he grew from the ham fisted idiot moment. Yeah. He became more aware to the point where in Genesis he has that moment of why is it always me? Mm. He becomes self aware of what he's doing and of how he's behaving. Um But yeah, I mean, if you're someone who just watches a snapshot of Harry and what you see is Harry Solver is a ham or Harry the Hamfist is and Harry Solver is an imbecile. You haven't watched Harry mm -hmm. at all. Like you genuinely haven't, no. do you know. And it's actually one of the things I did. We didn't talk touch about it when we we didn't touch on it when we talked about Zygons, but in Revenge, I sort of said that Sarah Jane was a bit of a dick mm -hmm. to him, and the Doctor was as well. Like he got yeah. ragged on a lot in that story. Yeah. I love that in his final story with them. They're so much more... They're a cohesive unit together, the three mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. They clearly care for each other very much. The yeah. three of them. There's no picking one over the other. Mm -hmm. And like you, you made the comment of like when, they're, when they arrive at the beginning, the Doctor has his tartan gear on or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sarah's wearing his hat and Harry's wearing his scarf. Yeah. I was like, that's perfect. That mm -hmm. that's what we want, um, and that and that's and that's Harry. Do you know what I mean? He's part of the group. Yeah. Do you know he he is who he is. No, I have I am I am who I am in my head. <laughs> I <laughs> am who I. Am. <laughs> uh, so I suppose that leads us to the stories. Yeah. So unlike so usually the way we do this is we do the top three and the bottom three. Yes. Harry only has six. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do is we're going to rank them six, five, four, three, two, one. Six mm -hmm. being the lowest, lowest. performing mm -hmm. of 
of the bunch and one being the best. Now, I will say, if we were to do this purely on the scores we gave it, yeah, it'd be like six, five, four, then three, two, one, probably. All yeah. The same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're we're gonna do it each. So I think I think a good way to start this, Paddy, might be just for each of us to list what we did as our six by four, three, two, one, okay. and then we can go sort of item by item. Yeah. So mine was Revenge of the Cybermen. In case uh-huh. you, I didn't sort of set that up well enough there when I was talking about strengths. Yeah. Revenge of the Cybermen, Robot, Ark, Terror. And I will be honest, Santarin and Genesis are interchangeable in my mind. Okay. Um, But I did Santarin and then Genesis. Okay. We're way off. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm Robot. Yeah. Revenge of the Cybermen. Yeah. Terror of the Zygons. Yeah. Santarin Experiment. <laughs> Ark in space, Genesis. Wow, that yeah. is very different. I was, yeah. Okay, so I suppose a good first question, though, is why do you have Robot in six? So, if we had done this for Dodo, it would be the exact same reason as to why I would have put the massacre there. For the introductory story, Harry doesn't have a whole lot of impact, nor hmm. does he have, like, up until like the last episode, he's, he's still Dr. Sullivan. Yeah. So... And then we get to, f- to see the fallout of you. So, you know, oh, James Bond, you know, like that yeah. type of thing. So just by virtue of the fact that, you know, there's not an awful lot of Harry in it. Mm. That's why I put it in the sixth position. Okay. So the way I, the, way, blah, 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 the reason why I flipped it around was I put Robot in five because everything you just said, we don't get a whole lot of Harry. Mm-hmm. What we do get, though, is really good. It's a nice introduction to who Harry is. Yeah. He's a bit of a goofball. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he is part of the organization, he's very serious, he's very caring and stuff like that. It was a nice introduction. He wasn't the focal point, but that's because Tom Baker was the focal point. Yes. Revenge though is Revenge of the Cybermen is Harry's Green Death. Yeah. All see... of his character <laughs> development. Piss it away, why don't you? Because he, yeah, because I remember like we had this discussion about Harry on mm. our thing of revenge in the sense of <laughs> thematically speaking, mm. I viewed it as the adrenaline rush is wearing off, mm. and so the tiredness of Harry, who was not used to this, is showing. Mm. And I like, like, in thematically speaking, I like that. And I can't shift that idea from my head, unfortunately. Yeah. Whereas I see it as they read Harry in the arc and wrote him exactly the fucking same. Yeah. Taking away all of the development mm. and not even paying attention to, like, that at the end of the arc, he's not the same as he was at the beginning. Mm. Taking that away. Mm-hmm. And particularly, though, when you go, like, robot, you know, a little bit of a goofball. Ark, ham-fisted idiot, progresses through helping Vira, progresses through, progresses through, Suntaran, Genesis. Then we get this character from Revenge. Are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> like it, It's like what they did with Joe. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to write her character at the end the way she was at the beginning. It's like, yeah. But there was development in the middle. And it's not even entirely Harry. Because yeah. I can agree with you to a certain point in that Harry's gotten tired, it's mm-hmm. you know, all overwhelming. That explains Harry himself. Yeah. But not the way the others treat him. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sarah and the Doctor treat Harry there as if the first fifteen minutes of Arc mm-hmm. was all this man has ever done. Yeah. In all their time with him. Which I think just does the character a disservice. Yeah, it's like, uh, we'll give you Frontier and Space and Planet of the Daleks, and here's Green Death. Yeah. Do you know, and, and I was like, what the fuck? Why, why did you do that? Mm. Do you know? So that's why, for me, Revenge is his lowest. It has some great moments. Mm. But again, that scene where like, he's trying to get Sarah down to the planet is fantastic. Like, I, it, it, no, that is, that is a great sequence. It's, it's mm. amazing. But also, like, the... Um, rushing to help the doctor you know like yeah. with the harness again and like that's the thing, like there's some there is some good harry moments in it and that's why i put it in the five position because mm. like we whereas for me that good doesn't outweigh 
the yeah. way they treated his character. And I think in Robot, it's just good fun. Yeah. He's a good fun character, and that's it. Maybe, like, maybe I should knock it down to the six because he covered that fucking asshole Kellerman's eyes. Oh, that Mr. absolute. F- oh no, I'm not gonna get. Mr. <laughs> not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, okay, so that was six that, and five, right? Yeah, for both of us. Yeah, they were okay. they were interchangeable. Okay, so then four, I have arc, and three, I have terror. Oh, we're like, we're, we're completely off because like yeah. my my four is Zygons. Okay, so why is why I'll ask because I have Zygons in three, so. Mm. Why do you have Zygons in four? I have this would Zy- be very weird for people to follow along with. Which yeah, I have Zygons in four because of actual Harry mm. isn't there for a whole lot. Mm. It's an Ian Martyr tour of the force, really is. But for Harry, not so much. And while the bits that are there for for Harry, Harry, mm. like I, I like it. I don't think like his contributions in the other story, the other stories. I don't think it could it, it, for me. It just doesn't rank above them. That's all. Mm. So for me, I'll tell you why I put Zygons in three, mm-hmm. and then I'll I'll circle back around to Ark. So I put Zygons in three because unlike Revenge, yes, whoever wrote Zygons paid attention to Harry as an individual. Mm-hmm. This is Harry as he is. Do you know? Like, Zygon Harry is great to watch. Remember? Yeah. But real Harry, gone is the klutz. Mm-hmm. He's taking it seriously. He's doing his work. He's investigating. He's part of the team. It's it's Harry as a fully formed character. Mm-hmm. Not as grandiose as what we're going to see in my two and one spot. Mm-hmm. But it's Harry as a fully formed character. The reason why I put Ark in four. Yeah. Because Harry's not there yet. And the sexist comments are a bit much in Ark. Mm. Now, it's not enough to drop it below Robot or below Revenge. But it's a great beginning to his life as a space and time traveler. Mm-hmm. But, like, he can grate on you if you don't already love him. <laughs> because of the clumsiness and the forgetfulness and whatever he overcomes it and that's great but for me in Zygons he's just a fully formed like he's fully formed this is like mm-hmm. the end of the change whereas Ark is the beginning okay and so I would rank the end over the beginning personally cool. alright fair enough so you had Zygons in four what did you have in three? I had Santaran Okay, let's do some Taran next. Because so, I, I had some Taran in two. So okay. We can do some Taran next. My thing with some Taran is, is that th- the reason it's in the b- position behind Ark for me is that it, because mm. it's only a two-parter. Mm. No, it's a great it's a great two-parter. It really is. Um, but <laughs> the way to describe sorry for the sense, but the way to describe it is, mm. is, that, is that like, you know, we're it's like you're getting to the top of the roller coaster, mm. and then it just stops. Unfortunately, because <laughs> it, 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 imagine it just stops, and then it gets picked up, and it gets brought down, and it starts on a di- completely different track. That mm. that's all it is. It's like he's so good in it, like because mm. there's so many good moments. And like you know, he's by himself in a yeah. scenario that he's like on Ark. He had the Doctor and Sarah Jane to help him, but he's by himself mm. here. And he looks after the poor dead or the, the the tortured guy, which is great. His anger for what's happened to Sarah Jane is great. So he's he's fantastic in it. And I will mm. admit, my my two and three. I could I could flip them on any given day. I'll admit that. Mm. Um, but I think it's just by virtue of the fact that like Santarin is just so short. That's why yeah. I did. That's why I didn't give it a five. Remember when we did the stories because mm. it just felt it was just, it just had it just lacked the oomph. Like maybe one more episode or something might have helped. I don't know, but mm. that's why I, that's why I really like him uh, in this one, and that's why it takes the tree slot for me. Cool. So I had it in the number two spot, mm-hmm. and like I've said, I sometimes kind of flip flop between two and one for Suntaran for Harry because 
it's Harry on his own. Mm -hmm. And we get to see what is Harry like by himself? How does he manage? How does he survive? Okay. Forget advanced technology. That's not really relevant. Forget, you know, having a support structure. This is Harry in the wild on his own. In a camo skin coat with a stick. (laughs) What does he do? Yeah. And for me, I think that's great. And again, if we're going from the ham-fisted idiot and building and building and building, this two these two episodes do so much to say that sort of change we started to see in him in arc that wasn't a fluke. Mm-hmm. That's tapping into the core of who Harry is. Mm-hmm. But also, we know that if you dump him somewhere, he will survive. Harry will find a way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for me, I thought that like we get to see a great display of his doctor side. We get to great to see a great display of his soldier side. Mm-hmm. Kind of similar to Zygons in that aspect. Mm-hmm. But I think in Santaran, because he has no additional support, he's on his own. For me, it just sort of it peaked that. Yeah. Because it's like, Zygons was great, but he was in Scotland with Eunice and whatever. Mm-hmm. Here he's apparently in London, apparently <laughs> on his own with a stick. Yep. You know, and he was perfectly willing to go fucking toe to toe with the Suntar, and he didn't need to because the doctor does. But he was fucking willing, and so for me, that's why it snaked into the number two spot. Hmm. Your number two spot, though, was Ark. Ark. So, and the reason I love it. And mm. I think it's why it added to Ark being a five out of five. Mm. Is that in four episodes, Harry goes on an amazing character development journey. Mm. He really does. From being the ham fisted blunderer yeah. to very quickly, a cl- okay, not very quickly, but quickly. Mm. acclimatizing himself to the scenario because he gets grounded when Vira helped you know like you know, shows him the medical equipment mm. he gets grounded there which is perfect and he's also grounded with the virtue of the fact that it's Sarah's there you know mm. and then there's like immediately he, he goes to help a guy whose name I cannot remember now and I feel really bad but the the other person on the ship Rogan oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rogan. Rogan yeah. Um, like they take on Noah together, like mm-hmm. you know, and he's and he's there shooting at Noah, and it's Harry goes from from being someone that's completely out of his depth to mm-hmm. someone that you can rely on in these four episodes, mm-hmm. and I I I really enjoyed it. Like I mean, I forgot he does a, a fucking a dissection of an alien creature and is able to apply his his own medical knowledge to it to try and help determine stuff that's going on he's not a hindrance he's not a millstone around the guy's neck he helps and he adds and he supports and yes the old girl stuff uh the old girl comments and some of his other you know the comments later on they are they are kind of grating because like it's Mm. it's as i said it's the part of harry that we call a weakness Mm. but as the story goes on you see his growth to being the Harry that we love. And mm. that's why I put it in the number two section. Mm. But again, depending on my mood, I could flip that once on Taron because as you said as you said, we have the proof that it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. So then we have our number one spot. Yeah. Which we have both said is Genesis of the Genesis Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> the only no. the only position we agreed on. Now I will say one thing. Yeah. Four, three, two, and one. Mm-hmm. I think depending on my mood, mm-hmm. I could probably change him around. Inclu- including Genesis. I think what I will say about yeah, because like our top four are like are all the same, like in the sense yeah. of like you know, And our bottom two are the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In terms of Zygon, I would I would put that in terms of if I want to watch a great Ian Marker performance, I'll hmm. put Zygon at number one. But I don't I don't think I'd put it as a number one slot for a Harry performance. 
Okay, maybe we wouldn't put Zygon as number one for her, but like. But uh, three, two, I think. One. Three, like, uh, three yeah. two, and one. Well. Well, for me. Three, my, Zygon was my three, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think. I think Robot and Revenge are always going to be in the bottom two. Yeah. Is the point. Like the other four. There's just a big gap. You, you can between. play around with them a little bit. Um, but there's a there's a big leap from mm-hmm. the six and five spot up to four. Yeah. And then you maybe play with four and three a little bit and then like play around a little bit, whatever. Genesis though I said that Zygon is it's the end of Harry's journey, because this is his final episode mm-hmm. in this run. Daleks though is the great acting we see from Ian in Zygons mm-hmm. as like fake Harry. But that acting directed towards being real Harry. Yeah. No, I'd agree. It is the best of Harry. Because if you're someone who finds his clumsiness endearing, which some people do, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of that, but he's aware of it. Yeah. Like, why is it always me? Do you know? the From the very beginning of... The beginning of the landmine. Mm-hmm. All the way through to the end. The only reason why I said that, I would sometimes maybe swap out maybe Suntaran with this for the number one spot, or maybe even Ark, depending on my mood, is Harry himself doesn't drive a whole lot of it. No. He is a support to the Doctor throughout, but he's an excellent support. We kind of said that, like, especially in the second half, once they reunite with Sarah Jane, Mm. he takes on a less prominent part of the trio. But for the first half, it's him and the Doctor and they're actually they're they're Harry to me in that instance doesn't feel secondary, no. even though he even though he is, even though I suppose in terms of dialogue and presence he is, but he mm. never feels it, you know. Yeah. Um. And like, yeah, okay. There's all, okay. Obviously, there's the landmine section. That that's mm. just. But what I love, as you mentioned earlier on, is the do I have the right speech? Yeah. Because he's the only one that's not talking, but that's because, and as we said in our ep- in our episode review, the soldier aspect of like, he, like, I think we pretty much agreed that his doctor and soldier aspects of his military career were warring at each other. Yeah, because you had the whole Hippocratic oath, which was like you know do no harm, but also the realities of being a soldier in a war zone. Mm. Um, like I, I love his part of the "Do I have the right speech?" Mm-hmm. Like his. His presence in yeah, it, I suppose. Exactly. But I also love what comes just before. Mm-hmm. When he's laying out the cabling. Mm-hmm. And he's just so serious. Yeah. Do you know, and Sarah's talking to him. And she's like, oh, he's taking a long time. He's like, this is, you know, it's like I was saying in terms of his strengths. This is not a fucking joke. No. This is a serious moment and it deserves to be treated as such. Mm-hmm. And that's also a benefit of Genesis in general. And I suppose all of Philip Hinchcliffe's run on the show, really, as producer, is these things aren't funny. No, it, it, Hinch, Hinchcliffe's like gothic horror vibe mm. during his tenure is is probably my favourite uh, production is he's, he's, he's mm. probably my favorite showrunner ahead of uh, Russell T Davis mm. and I I'd even nearly say like the uh, Verity Lambert before I put in Russell because I like Verity yeah. was there for the golden Verity of... Verity did a great job yeah and I think Philip built massively on that yeah absolutely he he took it into I think they both took elements of what was happening in in at the time in terms of like television and movies mm. and added it to their because like the 60s were like i suppose like the late 50s and into the 60s you had a lot of sci-fi like you know forbidden planet and things like uh stuff like that or howard hawks is the thing mm. uh whereas in the 70s you're getting like the hammer horror side of things and like i suppose barry had a small bit of that in, with aspects of john's run as well no barry focused more on Social commentary. Yeah, absolutely. He Barry's more like the Gene Roddenberry era because you know mm. the the TOS Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I know Philip's era is. I I think that's probably why Tom was my favorite is because the era mm. is my favorite. But I think Harry works so much better 
here mm -hmm. where we can have him be the clumsy guy to start with mm -hmm. who grows ground because if it had been with Verity I think Harry would have just been like Ian love Ian yeah absolutely Ian be Ian mm -hmm. he's <laughs> he is who he is yeah um whereas we see Harry whether it's he grows or whether it's just other sides of him coming into the fore mm -hmm. it's great I think had we had Harry with Barry, mm -hmm. I think he probably would have ended up a bit more like Mike. Do you know where the condescending, where the old boy attitude would have come across as incredibly condescending? Or fucking heaven forbid, John Wiles. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think, I don't think Harry as a character would be as beloved by you and me. No. Oh, he may be beloved by other people. Mm hmm. Looking at you, Stephen. Um, but I don't think you and I would have connected so much with Harry. No. Under, in any other era than this one. No. Because this era allows Harry to grow. Mm -hmm. From funny, clumsy to... Deadly serious. Deadly serious. While not losing his compassion. Mm -hmm. Not losing his... Without losing his his self, yeah. Whereas I think under a different producer, he may have done. Mm -hmm. But like, there's a, like and another sequence, I suppose, as well. Like that, I think we often overlook is the trench sequence in episode one of Genesis. Mm. Like when the gas attack happens, he madly scrambles to get a gas mask for Sarah Jane and for himself. Yeah. And then when the uh, Thal soldiers jump in, he's mm. in hand to hand combat with them. Though he gets taken out very easily, but he still the soldier yeah. aspect kicks in and it just goes to show like that like harry is still and he's still a member of the military so like yeah. he's not just he is uh what's the best way to put it he is colonel potter he is not major mm. winchester mm. he's also colonel potter not henry blake yeah or to use a star technology He's Beverly, not Flocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. Do you know? Still Doctor first. Mm -hmm. But with all of that. Like, Beverly wasn't a commander just purely because she was the chief medical officer. Mm -hmm. Deanna yeah. says, you didn't need to get the rank. Mm -hmm. Why did you do bridge officer training? Harry doesn't need to be, like, he doesn't. Doctor comes first, mm -hmm. but the rest of it is there, cemented in the character, which yeah. I think I think is fantastic. Um, I didn't look too much into what happens to Harry after the show, mm. which I probably should have, but we didn't have time. Um, a few things that we do know is if you consider Big Finish as canon, mm -hmm. at one point in time Harry goes missing. And he's missing for years. Mm -hmm. And in that continuity, Harry could still be out there. We don't know. Mm -hmm. What I do like about that Big Finish connection, so that the Big Finish connection I'm talking about is the Sarah Jane Smith mm -hmm. series. What I do like about it is that it shows that Harry and Sarah remained friends. Yeah. Because uh, if we want to go and put something that uh, is I suppose more canon the Sarah mm. Jane adventures yep. when Sarah Jane gives like a cursory overview of the earth based companions or the contemporary companions mm. she says Harry and she says I loved Harry in the sort yep. of a I think the way she says it is in the sense of Harry unfortunately passed away possibly yeah because it, 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 the way she says it isn't a friendship lost in terms mm. of like a friend, sorry, it's not a friendship severed, it's a friendship lost, yeah, yeah. But again, how much the big finish stuff fits into that as well, is, yeah. Is, is <laughs> yeah. Um, what I will say though is that also in Sarah Jane Adventures, when she's giving Luke a name, mm -hmm. there are two names that she mentions Harry and Alistair. Mm. So, you know, clearly that friendship and connection exists beyond that. And, you know, Harry does appear in other books and stuff like that. I haven't looked into it too much. Mm -hmm. 
Which he's usually in, I do for these, but I just never found this way. Well, he was in the Amazing Scratchman book. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the other thing, right? We, we, actually, let's talk about Harry and Scratchman for a second, hmm. because this I have listened to recently. Right? I went when I went to London a couple of weeks ago. I listened to Scratchman while I was there. Harry in Scratchman is, in terms of character progression, from a bridging robot arc revenge. Suntar and Genesis Terror as a sort of character progression order. Mm-hmm. I would put Scratchman between Revenge and Suntaran. Because Scratchman does have a lot of Harry the imbecile in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole final third of the book. I don't want to spoil it, but the whole final third is basically what if reality was dictated by Harry Sullivan's imagination and his inability to control it. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, the core of Harry, the caring nature, the doctor, the willingness to get stuck in, it's all still there. Um, I just think Tom lent a bit more into early Harry. I say early Harry, this six episodes, but like he lent more into Harry as he appeared earlier than Harry as he appeared in in Zygons or in Genesis. Um, Scratchman is amazing, though. I believe I've said this several times before. Uh, I'm just taking a look there on his TARDIS wiki page. Mm. Um, I, I so one thing that I kind of I suppose I forgot. And I think I think I forgot because it angered me is that apparently mm. Harry develops a essentially a Zygon cyanide to use against Zygons. And what the fuck is that? Is that in Harry Sullivan War? No, it's in uh, Zygon Invasion, Zygon Inversion. Uh, uh... I th- I think it kind of pissed me off because it was because of the the showrunner at the time. A lot mm. of his decisions towards the that reference the classic era pissed me off. So I probably just blocked it out. Mm. But because there is a book called Harry Sullivan's War that Ian wrote. Hmm. Must they definitely need to read that because he like Ian like wrote a lot of Target novels. And, he did. Yeah, and he also again helped develop the idea of Scratchman along with Tom. Um yeah. So his contributions passed on screen. Yeah, are there like one of the favorite thing? One of my favorite things about Harry, and I can't remember what. It might be on the Zygons DVD, mm-hmm. or it might be in the season one Blu-ray set. There's there's a there's a section on Ian Martyr and his target novelization contributions, because mm-hmm. while he's not up there with Terence Dix, because Terence Dix wrote a million of them, Ian wrote a lot of them. And Elizabeth Sladen tells a story about how Ian would call her up and say, "Liz." Lizzie, you're not doing much in this. Do you mind if I put in something extra for you to do? <laughs> As if she's going to act it out. <laughs> do you know? But like he understood the characters mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. And, you know, also in that segment, obviously Liz talks about when Ian passed away and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think... Uh, I'm really sad that Ian, or that Harry left the show when he did. Mm-hmm. Because I love Tom and Liz together on their own. Like I said, some of our best episodes come up, right? From your, from you and I in terms mm-hmm. of personal favorites. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, people decided to not keep Harry on because they kind of saw that with Tom, he wasn't needed. Yeah. And maybe he wasn't needed to do the heavy lifting in the way that Jamie was. Mm-hmm. Or in the way that Stephen was. Or, or, or Ben or, yeah. or, or Ian or whatever. But he fits so well in that trio. He did. He he really did. He was. They formed a good unit. Yeah, I think you know. It kind of showed in many ways that. A more than one companion works mm-hmm. because all through like John only ever had one companion his entire time. Mm-hmm. But also, like if you think about say Jodie Whittaker's run where she had three. Mm-hmm. And you kind of say like, oh, well, you know, what's the point of having, you know, Ryan and Yaz because they're both like similar age or mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, 
you can have multiple companions and make it work. And I'm actually kind of I'm a bit upset that they decided to get rid of Harry. Mm-hmm. Because I think it would have continued to work with the three of them. I think so as well. It would be, it would be interesting to see it would be interesting to see Harry in the next two stories. Yeah, I mean Harry in the next in Planet. I mean Doctor Harry would come out. Mm-hmm. Hundred times. Harry and Pyramids, that would be an interesting one. That would be great. That would be an interesting one to see. I think, though, I, we're probably will end this with a happy note. Uh, mm. In a story that was written in 2015, mm. Harry was Harry was found. He was alive. Oh. Uh, he, apparently, he discovered a possible cure for HIV. Good man, Harry. Because uh, in Death of the Doctor, which is the Sarah Genevieve story, Harry mm. uh, went into uh, developing vaccines. Yes. Yeah, so apparently when he was off disappearing, um, the uh, story called Damaged Goods is mm. uh, Harry's return. So, And that story was written in 2015. When was that story set? Uh, let me just check. No, it says June 2015 on the TARDIS wiki page, so... Let's see. It's a seventh Doctor story. Mm. And apparently it's written by Russell T. Davis. Hmm, but what, when is it set? Uh, <laughs> In what see. Earth year? <laughs> uh, oh no, it's set, it's set in 2015. It's set in 2015. Okay, because that kind of doubles back on him being... He's possibly still missing in Sarah Jane Adventures. And that could be why Sarah said that like she misses Harry. Because Death of the Doctor... I mean, Liz passed away in 2012. Mm-hmm. So... This book is set in twenty fifteen. Well, okay, I'd say so, Harry's found. Yeah, so like the okay, apparently it was written in nineteen ninety six, and Harry turns up in twenty fifteen. Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and again because this was written by apparently because this was written by Russell and Russell created mm. Sarah Jane Adventures, so I have a feeling that that continuity was there the whole time. Yeah. Um. Well, we've kind of rambled a lot at the end of this rambling. Yeah. yeah. I think the takeaway from both me and Paddy on this is if you haven't watched Harry's stories, watch them. Hmm. Maybe give Revenge of the Cybermen a skip, but the rest, watch them. Watch the first three episodes of Revenge, then, then, then you can skip it. Because he was a great contribution to the show. He really was. And he is missed. He is indeed. He is indeed. And as we say to all of our... Uh, members of the Doctor Who universe that have since passed on, thank you very much for your contributions to this wonderful show. Indeed. As we said on Monday, though, Mm -hmm. next week it's going to be the Doctor and Sarah on their own Mm -hmm. going to the planet of evil. Which for an evil planet is very pretty. (laughs) But evil. (laughs) But evil. (laughs) The planet is evil. That's bad. But it's but it's very pretty. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> the Frogart is also cursed. That's bad. <laughs> uh, Until then, though. Bye. Bye. <laughs>